Kamusta kayo mga amigo at amiga and this is the Senorito Jake De Leon and you are listening to the 123 Podcast. In my career, in what could have been the absolute worst night, in what was literal hell, I was not cynical, I was not jaded, I stood, I fought. You fucking monk! These people, these are all my people because they acknowledge me! You think you know me? Welcome to the show where we talk and think and everything wrestling. Welcome to the 123 Podcast. How are you guys doing today? It's that time of the year again, folks. It is my birthday. But what makes this birthday even more special is that I am turning 18. Gosh, I still do not feel like an 18-year-old. I'm turning 18 on October 9th. I'm releasing this on the weekend, um, October 7th. Um, and I, I still do not feel like an 18-year-old. I feel like... I still feel like a 17-year-old stuck in a 12-year-old's body, basically. Um, but yeah, basically, life at 18 should be interesting because that's where everything goes down. Um, I am now eligible to get a driver's license. I can now finally drive. I am now eligible to pay taxes. I do not want to pay taxes, but we got to because our country would not function without taxes. Um, but yeah, basically, I am now eligible to pay taxes. I am now eligible to go to prison. That sucks. <laughs> I do not want that to happen. Like, not even once. I do not want to go to prison because why would I? So yeah, let's talk about what this year's birthday episode is all about. Today, we're going to be talking about why pro wrestling is fascinating. So here's a bit of a background about how uh, this whole episode came to fruition. So after I recorded last year's birthday episode... That's when I started planning. I was like, yo, I got to talk about something pretty big for next year because I'm turning 18 and I would feel bad for myself if I didn't talk about something very important to me at 18. Um, so um, the last two birthday episodes that I did, um, the impact of pro wrestling in my life and how the Hardys inspired me, those are two very personal episodes for me. And uh, by the way, apologies for my voice. I am recording this while sick. Uh, I am suffering. I'm currently suffering from a very bad cold. And uh, yeah, that put me out of commission for one day in school, which sucks, especially for me, because I did not want to miss any lesson. But life strikes at the most unexpected time. So uh, here we are. <laughs> so... Um, going back, I was thinking um, of a topic that um, the collective fan base would agree on. Because like I said, the last two birthday episodes that I did are very personal episodes for me. So I thought of a few topics, but I landed on the topic of why pro wrestling is fascinating. So I thought, sure, let's run with that topic. And uh, basically, I initially planned this episode to be like a, a documentary of some sorts where I would interview a few... A few people um, and put together like a, a documentary type of thing. But then I realized, well, I do not have the sufficient manpower to complete a documentary. Because number one, I am a very busy man. I mean, especially right now that I'm in 12th grade where everything goes down. You know, college admissions, um, getting scholarships for when you're actually enrolled to college. That's where all the pressure comes in. So I thought... No, I cannot complete a documentary. So uh, I scrapped the draft that I had for the documentary. And basically, I just decided that, oh, I should just make this a podcast episode. Um, but I did not want to do this episode alone. So I was thinking of a few guests. This guest that I'm about to introduce to y'all later on is someone that I'm actually happy to have on the show. Because in this episode, we have none other than Mr. Philippine Wrestling, Jake DeLeon. I am very, very excited to share this episode with y'all. Um, I mentioned in the anniversary episode that I am planning to have JDL here on the show. And here we are. I am very, very excited to share this episode with y'all. Um, a year worth of planning 
will culminate in this episode. So, uh, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoy this episode. So, without further ado, let's get to the main event of today's episode. This is why pro wrestling is fascinating with Mr. Philippine Wrestling, Jake DeLeon. I am Mr. Philippine Wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, for this episode of the 123 Podcast, is this is going to be a very big episode because we have our very first special guest. So without further ado, please welcome our next MWF champion, Mr. Philippine Wrestling, the Senorita Jake DeLeon. How are you doing today, man? Good. I am good. You, well, just for everyone's sake, you're recording this in August. The yes. MWF championship hasn't happened yet. So yeah. Thank you for saying next I'm doing a champion, and I'm, but I'm doing good, Jules. What, yeah. What's up? What's up? I'm doing great. <laughs> I already told you this before we started recording, but I'm actually very nervous. I'm shaking a lot. But <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about why pro wrestling is fascinating. Um, this is going to be very fun. That tweet that you put out um, last week, I'm guessing, where you talked about um, to the 95 percent of the people who say, "Oh, pro wrestling is fake." All that. You remember that tweet? Yeah, I remember that tweet. To the to like the. To the people that say pro wrestling is fake, we never wanted you in the club anyway. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. We're gonna talk about. Yeah, we're gonna talk more about that. So, um, let me start off this episode by saying that pro wrestling is fascinating in many ways. Um, once we go through this episode, we'll know why. Um, but there's this ongoing stereotype, um, surrounding pro wrestling where people seemingly degrade the art form by saying statements like, "Oh, pro wrestling is fake. Pro wrestling is scripted. Um, wrestlers don't even hurt each other for real." I mean, as we all know, those are like cliche statements. Um, so, um, as a wrestler yourself, how do you handle the stereotype, and how do you handle those types of people? I mean, you you, you kind of have like as a wrestler, you kind of have to accept that those kind of people won't really go away. Um, it's like uh, if I can like count, like if I can like compare it to something. It's like when you're a kid, right, and then you suddenly learn that Santa Claus isn't real. Yeah, and then you you get mad like oh I don't like Santa Claus anymore because he's not real. So like as a kid you enjoyed wrestling because oh shucks this is like cool this is like this is awesome spectacle whatever great fighting, uh, cool looking guys. And then you learn as you grow up it was fake, and then you just kind of like fall out of love with it because oh no it lied to me. But at the same time like with the world it is right now. Um, it's so much of an open secret just how quote-unquote scripted it is that it shouldn't be a lie anymore. But I guess there are still some people that are harboring those feelings of like, oh, I've been lied to by pro wrestling, so I won't like it. And I will do everything in my power to make fun of it, to call it out, to say it's fake. But at the same time, it's like, it's an open secret also that all the movies you watch, all the TV shows you watch are fake. So like nobody makes fun of them. Nobody calls them out. It's just like, you know, Wrestling was on the premise that it was a real sport, and then people ended up figuring out that it was fake. But and then they harbor ill feelings towards it, and you know. But we're no really no, no more different than a than a movie or a TV show that you watch. Basically. Yeah, I can actually compare pro wrestling to let's say the MCU, and this is not to dig to MCU movies. I mean, you've seen how many times I've brought up MCU movies in your stream, right? Yep. I mean, I love them. But I know for a fact that they're fake. I mean, they got these mind-blowing CGI, and they have characters that are basically non-existent. So, parang it's so basically there's like there's not much difference. Um, there's not like a huge margin when it comes to how fake it is. It's kind of like a, an agree to disagree statement, if you can say that, deba. Right? Yeah, kind of, because like. You know, we, we're not here, we, we can try as much as possible to like, you know, try to pull you into the magical world of wrestling, right? We can try yeah. as much as possible to like, tell you that, hey, wrestling wrestling may be like scripted, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, if you come to a show, you'll enjoy it. But really, there's just a lot of people that kind of like are hard, hard set in the way that, oh, I'm not going to like wrestling because it's fake. But like, technically, you can say boxing is fake now because like, you know, how how fights sometimes go? How people sometimes don't don't like the results. I think there was that one clip of that MMA fight here in the Philippines where someone did a back fist, did not connect, but the guy went down anyway, and then just stayed there. <laughs> yeah. So like, I mean, pro wrestling has been doing it longer than you guys have, and then now people are like, I mean, just like if you wanna if you wanna put on spectacles like that and don't wanna get hurt as much, go to pro wrestling. We yeah. still do get hurt, but like at least you know we know what we're in for, like MMA and stuff. It's just like you should, good, good luck to you guys. Yeah, 
Okay, so with that said, let's move on to the characters. The character side of pro wrestling. So from a fan perspective, what do you think is the significance of characters in pro wrestling? Uh, I mean, without characters, there would be no pro wrestling. I mean, the whole... I'm, I guess, like, back in the old days, probably around the 40s, 50s, back when it was in this carnival days or everything, uh, maybe around the Bruno San Martino days, characters weren't really necessarily needed. Because, like, all you needed was, like a, like, a big dude or, like, a very iconic-looking man. Like, Bruno San Martino, he's not... He wasn't... Like, he's a character in himself because, like, you know, he's Italian. He, like, was able to... I think survived part of the Holocaust was able to run away from Nazis and stuff. So here's an interesting backstory. But it's just like it's just him. It wasn't until people like I don't know, like uh, Nature Boy Buddy Rogers, the Nature Boy Ric Flair, um, uh, Gorgeous George, when they finally like started becoming more flamboyant characters, where people started to you know get more ingrained or get more into the story. So like right now, it leads up to like the '80s, right? So the 80s, we had Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan was the guy. Hulk Hogan was the man that we watched because he was such a character. People loved him. But also, he had his bad guys that helped him out. We had Andre the Giant. We had, um, we had Sergeant Slaughter when he when he turned into like uh, an Iraqi sympathizer. Of yeah. course, we had uh, Piper. We had, of course, Ric Flair. So every, like, without characters... Um, Pro wrestling will still survive, but with the characters, it is more fun. Like you gotta, you gotta admit, like with characters that you can kind of like latch on to, relate to, like or hate, it's more fun to watch pro wrestling. So, as a fan, what do you look for in a wrestling character? Uh, in a wrestling character, I I don't really look for anything. That's that's the main thing about pro wrestling characters. Like the wrestling characters are supposed to show me something. I'm not supposed to look for anything in them. So, like, as a pro wrestling character, you're supposed to be able to show people, show the audience, like, who you are. We're not supposed to look at it. We're not supposed to, like, dig deep and see, oh, he's this kind of person, he's that kind of person. You're supposed to be able to show us that. So, I don't really look for anything. Um, but if I, like, like or hate the character, that means they're working. Like, if I like the character so much because of how cool he presents himself, great. If I hate the character so much because of how he acts, great. So, like, you know, you know that's how a character works. Okay, okay. So um, let me ask you this. So we're going to tap into your um, wrestler side of things. So as a part of the business, is the process of creating a character an easy task? And what um, formula did you like um, follow to create your base Senorito character? Uh, I, wouldn't say it would, I wouldn't say it's easy for everyone, but for me, it kind of like, it kind of like just fell into place because I am from Bacolod. So it's a place of like where Hacendas are, where Senoritos are. So if people don't know Bacol of Negros Occidental, that's like where a lot of like sugar farms are. So and like one like my family is like the uh like handling one of those sugar farms. So basically I got the idea from like my background. And I think a lot of it, like a lot of people also kind of like draw draw inspiration from their background, from where they came from, who they are. So for me as my senorita character, I thought of like, hey, I'm from Bacol. I wanted to be a heel. I wanted to be someone that people hated. I wanted to be like a rich person that owned land, that <laughs> bossed people around. It eventually did not really pan out that way. Kind of turned into like a baby face, like somewhere midway and was able to make it work anyway. So yeah, I mean, the character process at the start, it seems easy. Like, you know, you have your base character, you have what you want to do. But then as you grow as a, as a pro wrestler, as a performer, you kind of realize that having that having that isn't enough you kind of have to like get into like the minor details of the person of the character that you're playing so it's like a constant evolution that's why you see a lot of uh, wrestlers like i don't know uh, the miz chris jericho always constantly reinventing themselves that's because they know that these characters are much more than what they originally made them out to be they can grow they can evolve so yeah okay okay so um with that, let's talk about the moments in pro wrestling. So, um, and in your fan perspective, in what way can you say that moments in pro wrestling are unique compared to other mediums? Uh, moments in pro wrestling are unique to other mediums. It's like, technically, technically they shouldn't be. But the way that they're unique is like, I guess the most similar to like having live theater. 
like one, like I, I'm a fan of Broadway musicals. I'm a fan of like stage plays. So like, there's nothing quite like having a moment in front of an audience, in front of people that you were able to like, like performing in front of people is already really great in itself. But like, if you're able to create a moment in front of like thousands of people, like what the WWE or like AEW constantly do, it's like a way different feeling. So like the moments in pro wrestling, I think compared to other mediums like movies, TV shows, or or other 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 things, uh, is different because of like those moments are is happening right in front of people, in front of a live audience. That like, that's not something that you can like. That's not something that you can do again because it's live. Right? Yeah. Like like <laughs> like shout out to Vince because like he already left, but like there's a lot of stuff going on with him. Like he says, we're live, pal. <laughs> like there's no second take. There's no going yeah. back. Just like live theater, just like stage plays, just like musicals. That's why I feel like it's so it's it's like not not diminishing movies or TV shows or anything or their moments like that. But like I feel like with live performance moments, they're just like maybe ten times more difficult to pull off, but like ten times more rewarding as well. Okay. Okay, so it's like um, moments in pro wrestling are cannot be replicated, right? They can't, because like, yeah. if it happens, it happens. Like if you if you mess it up, it's messed up forever. If you yeah. do it great, it's great forever. So that's that's the fun, that's the scary and fun part of it. Yeah, it's kind of like the Titus O'Neil greatest Royal Rumble slip. Yeah. That basically that basically defined his entire career. I mean. But, uh, yeah, I, w- I would say that. But also, it's it's good that Titus is a guy that helps out in the community so much that we can overlook. We can yeah. make fun of him, and he like laughs with us. But like, also, he's a very great figure in the WWE community, for, like to help out like all of his programs and everything for like young kids and athletics. So I'm 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 pretty happy. Uh, for sure, for sure. Okay, so um, um, were there moments in your fandom or in your career that solidified your love? Or interest in pro wrestling, and if you can share some of them, what are those moments? The the moment that I remember that really like solidified my fandom, because like I I used to watch WWE right, like I used to watch WWE when I was younger, but then obviously it was it was not allowed, <laughs> so I had to like sneak in watching wrestling wherever I could, and like back in the back then, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the channel. I'm pro- I'm pretty sure not. There was a channel called Star World. And Star I mean, World, I can, I can recall, I can recall. Can recall. So Star World had TNA on it. So oh. TNA, the pro wrestling promotion. Yeah. So the there was one match that I watched uh, that was like really mind blowing to me. It was the Ultimate X match where like there was an X of ropes on top of the ring, and then they had to like they had to like um had to crawl the, they had to cross the rope yeah. and get the belt in the middle of the ring. So one match I watched there, it was, I think, AJ, well, I know AJ Styles was in it, in it, I think, and then I think it was Saban and some other guy. So the moment that blew my mind, because, like, the, the usual way to get it was obviously to just cross, like, tightrope the, tight the rope or, like, cross the rope and then get the belt. But these, like, the two other competitors, not AJ Styles, they were dangling upside down, trying to grab the belt against one another while they're hanging upside down. So like that already was really intense. And then a- what AJ did, he did a springboard and then he just like sprung up, went right to the middle of that exchange and then grabbed the belt and then came down with it and he won the match. I'm like, yo, that, that was cool. In yeah. pro wrestling perspective, that was amazing. It's the like the TNA X division was like my jam. And then like doing that in that kind of match just like blew my mind. So I was like, I was like, I was always wondering, okay, what's the what's the next thing that pro wrestling can do to make it better? So I was always like just watching TNA. I was like when I finally got back to watching WWE, it was just like, what 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 cool thing, what other cool thing can it show me that will make me happy? Okay, now um were there moments in your career that solidified your love for pro wrestling? I mean, before I started my career, I, I already loved pro wrestling. So um, I already loved pro wrestling because I wouldn't be I wouldn't be like bumping and like falling on my back if I wasn't like if I wasn't in love with it. But the one moment that solidified my love for pro wrestling most likely was the first. Um, well, I, there's a couple, but like if it really firstly the first one that solidified was my first ever match in front of a lot of people, which was in 
Makati Cinema Square, which is now I think called Makati Central Square. Um, it was my first match against Classical Brian Leo, and then I was going coming out as a baby face. We were main event and everything, and I'm surprised that people cheered. Honestly, I was expecting to go out in front of those like I don't know hundred something people and like not get any reaction. But then when they cheered, when I went out and then shook everyone's hand and everything, pre-COVID, of course, I shook everyone's hand like a politician, like smiled, made them like feel good, thank them for being there. Yeah, like that was just like solid, like it solidified my love for pro wrestling because I, I, I'm pretty sure like a lot of wrestlers have already said this and they've said this on podcasts many times, but that feeling of like getting that reaction from the crowd while doing a performance is like unlike anything like people have said like if you can bottle up that thing if you can bottle up that feeling it, it would be a drug <laughs> it would be a legit drug but yeah uh that first moment definitely solidified my love obviously i've had other moments also like my match with beautiful billy suede i've had moments like with the, my match with tjp those moments continue to always like just solidify my love for pro wrestling and yeah like I, I don't think I'll ever fall. I, I well, bad bad experiences will kind of like make me sour on pro wrestling sometimes, but I can't really fall out of love with it. I feel. Yeah, you explained that on your CM Punk video, right? Yep, yep. Uh, I kind of like uh, kind of when I watched CM Punk return for the first time in like seven years in AEW, it made me emotional because like despite the bad stuff that I went through in pro wrestling in the pro wrestling industry here. I know CM Punk went through a lot of bad stuff of, of his own. Like, so I, I was surprised. I really thought I was, he was happy, like, just staying out of the spotlight, not being a pro wrestler anymore. But then when he returned, it just, like, kind of, like, turned off, turned the clock on or, like, turned the switch on in my head and said, okay, I might come back. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if that happened. Like, I'm pretty sure it happened before I joined NWF, like, I wrestled for NWF, so... Kind of like it's kind of like fate. Ah uh, yeah. Um, since you mentioned MWF, that return that you did, oh my goodness, that shook the hell out of me. I was watching. <laughs> I was watching. I was watching the premiere of episode one of Action Better TV, um, on Facebook. Um, I saw Ken, and I was already very excited because Ken was in the building. So when Robin Sane did the a leap and drop for the second time, and then your music hit, I was like, I was in the review session because it didn't. So I wasn't able to really hear your music. Yeah. And when you came out, I was like, holy shit, it's JDL. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Like, I was actually so hyped. I was actually so hyped when I saw you come out of that curtain. But yeah, man, that was that was an amazing moment. And um, it was, um, I would, I can say that I felt like an out-of-body experience then. Wow. When I saw, <laughs> no, no, no exaggeration, like, I legit felt an out-of-body experience. Like, I may be focused on the review session that I ha- I, that I was having back then, but when I saw you come out of that curtain, I was like, holy shit. Like, it's like, I've never felt that feeling ever since CM Punk's return. Because I, I was playing with my niece, and then, there, and then I heard the riff. And then that's when the out-of-body experience started kicking in. And I felt the same way when you came out of that curtain in the first episode of Action of the TV. So, uh... Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that I'm was happy. I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you for saying yeah. that. No worries, man. No worries. Let's talk about um lastly, let's talk about storylines in pro wrestling. So were there any storylines in pro wrestling that inspired you to be the wrestler or the personality that you are today? <laughs> uh, like I'm gonna I'm gonna get like some heat on this, but like the storyline that inspired me specifically, like to be the pro wrestler that I am today. Um, I do when I first started thinking about what my character would be, the JBL character. I remembered JBL's entire championship. Run. I wanted to be JBL so badly. I wanted to be the rich guy that beat up people, um, and cheated his way through everything. Sadly, it did not turn out that way. But like, he was the first guy in my mind whenever I when I was starting out. Like, I wanted to be him. I, I, my first, this is, I think this is an exclusive because I've never talked about this before. But, like, my first finisher in pro wrestling was supposed to be a discus clothesline in honor of Jamie. Clothesline from hell. from hell. 
Yeah, so like I wanted it to be a discus close line to start off, but like I realized I started slowly started realizing I am not the biggest guy around. So like that is not as believable as picking them up and dropping them uh, on their backs. But yeah, uh, JB that whole story with JBL fighting against guys like Big Show, The Undertaker, Eddie Guerrero, John Cena eventually. People say that that what that's what made John Cena, but are you like that whole run was all thanks to JBL. He he got the belt from Eddie. He beat guys like Undertaker and Big Show, and then eventually passed on the torch to a guy like you know John Cena. And then yeah, the rest was history. I just wanted to be that like because I knew I didn't know it inherently back then when I started out, but I knew that JBL was a character that I hated and I wanted to be hated. And then that's where that's where I got the idea. So JBL and JDL, basically. It 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 was a, but the JDL name didn't really actually come from JBL. Like, just I I'm pretty sure I talked about this before, but like, yeah, the JDL name came from De Leon because De Leon is a rich, Christopher De Leon, right? Yeah, kind of like a rich Hashendero name, kind of like Christopher De Leon, so exactly. And I wanted just like a a, name, a first name. That would ring well with the Leon. So I thought Jake, Jake the Leon. And then it turns out JDL and then really close to JBL. But yeah, like I never really thought of JDL for the name, but like just a happenstance. Yeah. Okay. So um uh so let's talk about how important pro wrestling storylines are. So how do you think are storylines important in pro wrestling in general? Very, very important. Like uh, obviously, you can have like a banger match with two guys who are really good. Like one example, I always go back to is that Finn Balor versus AJ Styles match, where I think AJ Styles was on tour, and then Balor's opponent was injured, so they had they flew AJ back to the show. I don't know. I think this was Survivor Series or something. I don't really remember what what or maybe TLC what pay per view it was. But like was that the Bray Wyatt match? I I feel like. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, like there was a match where Finn Balor was supposed to face someone that someone couldn't go, so they flew AJ back from a tour or something. And then yeah. they had an awesome match. Like that that shows how much how how good pro wrestling can be with like no no story, no anything. But the storylines make it just way way better, especially if it's a really good storyline. Like uh, I don't know, like if you give me Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston. Uh, like, 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 just no, no backstory. It's, it's okay. It's, a, it's a fine match. But that whole story where Kofi was trying to get his first ever WWE Championship, being helped by the New Day, and then of course Daniel Bryan making it really hard for him as well. So like that storyline is an example of how how storylines make matches so much better. Um, I, I don't know if that's already like a dated term or anything. Like you know. We also have MJF versus versus CM Punk. Yeah. If it was just MJF versus CM Punk, it would be a great match regardless. But like because they had those backstories, they had that story of like, oh, MJF was a CM Punk fan. CM Punk like betrayed MJF, like be, or like made him sad or something. But yeah, now now it's like exponentially better because of what happened because of that story. For sure, for sure. It's kind of like I would I would love to compare it to the Jeff Hardy storyline from two thousand eight, right? So it's like yeah. um, Triple H um, was like, oh, you're just Okay, then you can't reach the brass ring, and then you have Edge, who, as we all know, steals opportunity and is the ultimate opportunist. And Jeff Hardy was like the underdog in there. I mean, and when he won the title at Armageddon, knowing that storyline and knowing all that backstory, it felt like so much better, right? Like it felt that the win, it like it's like it made the win a hundred times better, right? Yep. That's yeah. what storylines are supposed to do. They're supposed to make the matches mean more and the wins like. Yeah. I mean much, much more. Yeah. Better for everyone. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we're heading to the last question for this episode. So JD so JDL, I just want to ask you, why do you think pro wrestling is fascinating? Just like honestly, just just watch it and you'll find it fascinating, quite honestly. But the main reason why I find it fascinating is that it mixes in the physical aspect with the story aspect with a lot of variety, you know, there, wrestling isn't just wrestling. Wrestling is comedy, wrestling is action, wrestling is drama. Wrestling is basically everything, every kind of like entertainment rolled into one. 
So people who like action, people who like drama, people who like comedy, people who, you know, like feats of athleticism. It's all there. Just just watch it. I mean, I guess the only form of well no, there's horror also. There's romance also. Like everything is in pro wrestling. So if you want like an all encompassing form of entertainment to watch with action, with sporting action, it's pro wrestling. For sure. So that has been it, everyone. Once again, thank you to Jake DeLeon for being here on the show. Um, thank you for being a part of this very big and special episode. Because, You're like I said, this is the birthday episode, and I'm glad you, <laughs> and I'm glad that you're here to celebrate that milestone. Well, happy birthday, man! Uh, thank you, thank you. It's still August, but thank you so much. <laughs> I know, yeah. I was like, uh, I, it has to be on the episode that I say happy birthday. I yeah. Well look like a, like a, like a dick, so. <laughs> <laughs> It's fine, it's fine. But thank you so much, man, for being here on the show. So that's been it, guys. That has been why pro wrestling is fascinating with Jake DeLeon. So once again, I just want to thank JDL for being a part of this very big and special episode. I truly, truly appreciate you taking the time to prepare and have that very fun discussion with me. I had tons of fun. And I look forward to having you here on the show once again, man. So once again, thank you to JDL. If you guys want to go follow him on his socials, all the links to those will be in the description. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are at Senorita JDL. If you guys want to go watch him stream, please do by heading over to twitch.tv slash Senorita JDL. Uh, he streams mostly Minecraft, so if you guys want to go have a fun and chill time, there's no other place to go than at twitch.tv slash SenoritaJDL. And if you guys want to go watch him wrestle, since he's a professional wrestler after all, you can do that by subscribing to Manila Wrestling Federation's gank account. So you guys can go to manilawrestling.com, click on the image. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, um, there's the image. Click that on the website, and that will take you to MWF's gank account, where you can subscribe for only $10 a month or 540 pesos a month here in the Philippines, which is an insanely cheap deal for good pro wrestling. So if you guys want to go support him along with other amazing Filipino pro wrestlers like um, the PWOG's Tagamigo Ken Warren, um, the Daredevil himself, Robin Sane, Danger X Lawin, Crystal, um, Fabio Makisig, Kanto Kalabotero, Mix Valdez, Chelsea Marie, you guys can support them by subscribing to Manila Wrestling Federation's gank account. So once again, ManilaWrestling.com. Click on that image and you can watch them wrestle. Yeah, once again, thank you to JDL for being a part of this episode. And thank you guys for listening. I hope you all enjoyed. I look forward to the good things um, about life at 18. I do not look forward to um, paying taxes and going to prison. <laughs> but yeah, I am very, very excited for what life holds for me at 18. And uh, yeah. I'll see y'all in the other side next year. So, uh, yeah, once again, thank you guys so much for listening. I hope y'all enjoyed. For the last time as a 17-year-old, this has been JM. This has been the 123 Podcast. Peace.